Panthers forward Ryan Lomberg played the last two rounds of the postseason with a broken thumb. We're going to discuss what Ryan Lomberg's impact was throughout the run. And the NHL is not considering an in-season tourney. What do we think about that? We're going to discuss this more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome into this Wednesday, July 19th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We're to your team every day. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listener today. I'm Armando Velez, and you can follow me on Twitter at Bondoman12. Follow the show account on Twitter at LO underscore FLA Panthers and on Instagram as well at LO underscore FLA Panthers. And shout out to everydayers who come back and get their daily Florida Panthers fix. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. So, Cats fans, uh, we we really when it came to really the injuries, the timelines, what comes out after you once the actual report do come out. And you put two and two together, you you kind of you kind of have that light bulb moment of oh, this makes sense of why they missed a certain amount of time, the healing process that goes with the injuries, but also we realize the the toughness of NHL players, of course, once again, when they are playing through such injuries. Of course, we spoke about Aaron Eckblad playing through the the broken leg through the last three rounds, but uh, George Richards of Florida Hockey now did discuss that Ryan Lomberg uh, did break his left thumb in his second shift in game one of the first round against the Boston Bruins. But to discuss more about that on today's show, it is a Winans Wednesday, which means Jacob Winans is back on today's edition of the show. Jacob, welcome to the show. And man, cra- crazy to think, uh, Jacob, with the news of Ryan Lomberg having to get surgery prior to game five, missing the entirety of the first round and missing the sec- the whole second round and then having to play with an oversized glove on his left hand throughout the last two rounds. Just what are your thoughts when you hear the news of Ryan Lomberg uh, breaking his uh, left thumb? Honestly, it's, uh, it's not a surprise that Ryan Lomberg was able to play through that to an extent. Um, we know the Lamborghini is tough as nails. He, he's one of the uh, hardest nose players in the NHL. Uh, he's small in stature, but the the dude has has so much heart, and uh, I'm not at all shocked that he played with an injury like that. And you just kind of have to add it to the laundry list of injuries that the Panthers had throughout the postseason. It makes that that run they went on uh, all the more remarkable uh, that they were able to to play uh, the way they were and, and go as far as they did uh, with those injuries. With Lomberg, it's a little surprising that it was a broken thumb because we all kind of just assumed that his injury had something to do with that that cross check to the back or to the uh, upper body that he took from uh, Pavel Zaka. We we thought it, it had something to do with that. Uh, ends up being a, a broken thumb, which is a little a little bit surprising given what we thought it was. Um, which at the end of the day, probably better off that, that it wasn't a head injury or something, uh, head or neck that like we like we kind of guessed that it was but i'm not shocked that he played through it it, it it's it, it was kind of the identity of the panthers through that playoff run was to play through anything you could um whether whether that's a good thing or a bad thing that we don't want to glorify guys playing through injuries that that take major tolls on their bodies but also that's the heart of a warrior in, in lomberg and i think it, it's all the more impressive that he played and he, he was very effective he's been coming back with that oversized glove uh, he he had a couple of big goals and then uh, should have had should have had the the game winning goal in, in game one game against one. Carolina and over time that that goal definitely should have counted but um, the sweep still happened so it's it's okay but yeah it's uh, impressive and, and you have to tip your hat to him playing through that he's he's tough as nails yeah no doubt and you think about you think about 
him being a left-handed shot and the and the way the stick the way you grab the stick too that it's the one that you give more power uh to and and just the difficult the degree of give difficulty of having to grip the stick as well to get a, to get a shot off as well and when he did in fact return for the Florida Panthers uh in game 1 of the Eastern Conference uh final from that until game 5 he had 12 shots on goal throughout that span so a little over a shot per per game throughout that span i mean of course playing bottom six minutes you're not going to get as many opportunities but still the fact that he averaged over a shot per game for the role that he he's had still uh it, it's it's uh it's you, you gotta you gotta give credit to the the tenacity that he continues to show and george richards of florida hockey now did uh discuss more about the uh the the fight at the end of game two with Trent frederick about I actually went back to the highlights of game two and looked back at that fight with Trent Frederick. And all you see is uh, Ryan Lomberg grabbing the shoulder of uh, Frederick and doing nothing with that, with that, with that hand as he was delivering blows. And he was still able to get uh, Frederick to the ground, getting his arm around and having him um, there. Not, um, and, and still um, uh, Trent Frederick, who's, <laughs> quite a bit uh, taller than, than Ryan Lomberg is, as well, uh, too. And he's still able to get, get in front of his face, uh, too. And he, he scored a really big goal in, in game four. I mean, I mean, just Barry Kakaniemi was getting um, getting the puck out of the zone, and then Ryan Lomberg disrupts it, pins him to the boards, and then he, he Eric Stahl, and Colin White go for that tic-tac-toe play, which Ryan Lomberg finishes. Such a big goal at that time. That was a 3-2 score. At, at the at the time uh for for game four uh in in the third period too so a big a big opportunity a, a big clutch moment for ryan lombard too despite that and and the just the just once again the grip of the stick too is it's just something that's really hard to grasp yeah anytime you have a thumb injury especially on your dominant hand um holding a hockey stick is is next to impossible uh, lifting the puck on on any shot or pass with a with a broken thumb is it, it's absolutely insane to think that he was even capable capable of doing that. Um, if you if you play hockey and and you're a lacrosse guy as well, uh, I'm sure it's the same in lacrosse. But when if you even jam that thumb or or take any kind of direct hit to the thumb and it goes numb at that point, it's almost like you're playing with with one hand because you you can't really control the stick at that point. Uh, so to think that he was able to have surgery on it and play the rest of the playoffs when he came back uh, with a broken thumb on his dominant hand, that's pretty insane. Uh, and, and scoring that goal uh, in, in the Carolina game, they don't sweep the Hurricanes without it. Uh, and mm -hmm. and that, was, that was a huge moment, probably the biggest goal of his career outside of the overtime winner in Tampa, his first year with the Panthers. So uh, it's great that it's not going to be a long-term recovery. He should be good to go. Uh, but, but, you kind of have to marvel at that. It's it's insane. He was able to to play through it, uh, and thumb injuries are are no fun in in hockey. Having to control that stick with a busted thumb. So, yeah, hats off to him. That that was that's insane to to hear about that now. And I also want to say that that definitely means he was not choking Trent Frederick. <laughs> definitely not choking him, like all the Boston fans were were claiming. So, mm -hmm. no doubt. And uh, and and. It's it's a shame that he wasn't able to uh, experience the three one uh, comeback for the Panthers and even the even the even the series against the Toronto Maple Leafs, and uh, it, it's crazy to think that with the fourth line being being mostly unplayable when he was out of the lineup, how much the Panthers he was missed. By the way, uh, for for everyone listening. If you get a chance to watch Inside the Panthers for the the championship run uh, that was narrated by Steve Goldstein, please give yourself an opportunity. There's still a programming schedule out there uh, based on based on the based on the airing of of that. I saw it when it first premiered, and and the majority of the one hour was mostly spent on that uh, Bruins series. Of course, biggest uh, comeback in any um, biggest uh, upset and comeback in uh, NHL history. Well, not comeback, but because it wasn't 3-0, but biggest upset but just an opportunity for you guys uh, to watch it if you guys do have ballet sports and you live in the south florida area so please watch uh that that uh that that episode of inside the panthers but we're going to transition over to segment number two where we're going to discuss ryan lomberg uh being part of the panthers summer reading tour and also have a little fun on the podcast on which panthers players former and current that we would want to show up at a summer reading tour and which book 
we would want to be read to us if we were attending as as children. We are going to discuss that more here on the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. But first, we're going to tell you all about FanDuel and take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on betting from everything from the money line to the over under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All in the app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. Plus, when you win, you get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Segment number two here on this Wednesday July 19th edition of the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you for once again for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Once again, it's a Winans Wednesday edition of the show, which means Jacob Winans is here. And the story mostly came out, uh, the, the timing of it was due to the fact that Ryan Lomberg was at the Panthers uh, summer reading tour, something they do every, every year for local libraries in in Broward County and I never personally attended a a summer reading tour of any sport uh, for seeing my favorite players reading a children's book to me but we're gonna get a little creative on the show today just of course dog days of summer it's the off season so why why not just have a little fun here on on the show so Jacob and I, uh, we are going to be discussing more of which Panthers players, former or current, that we would want to show up at our summer reading tour and which children's book that we would want them to read to us. So I'm going to let you go first on this one, uh, Jacob. Uh, which Panthers players, which, 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 one, which would you choose as far as player and book? That's a tough one. Um, so if we can, if we include former players, that that opens it up a little bit more. I actually did go to one of those summer reading tours way back when I was uh, probably in third or third grade, maybe, uh, at uh, the Broward County Library in Coral Springs. Nathan Horton actually read a book to me and, and uh, a few of the the other kids there. So that was a pretty cool experience. I was a big Nathan Horton fan growing up, uh, so that that one was really fun. If I was a kid again right now. Um, that's tough. A former Panther that I would love, that I would, I would probably love to be in that situation with would be Vincent Trocek. Um, one of the best personalities I've ever seen, uh, with the Panthers. He's absolutely hilarious. Uh, the, the few times I got to meet him, he was awesome. Uh, super, super fun guy to to talk to. So Vincent Trocek is definitely at the top of that list. Current players, um, that's tough. My my girlfriend would probably kill me if I, for not saying Carter Verhage, but I'm gonna go with Matthew Kachuk. Uh, I think I think Chucky's personality would be would be awesome in that setting. And if I had to pick a book, um, let's go with a classic. Let's go with Good Night Moon. Good Night Moon. Wow. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. Matthew Kachuk reading Good Night Moon. I think that'd be that'd be a pretty pretty funny pretty funny experience. I, I think he could really get into it uh, with with uh, all the the rhymes and the motions and all that stuff. So yeah, I'll go with, I'll go with Chucky. Good night moon. That's a, that's a classic uh, uh, as far as book, but it's funny because also there's this one band. Ah, oh, damn it. I, I forgot the name of, I, I forgot the name of this music group. It was by the former lead singer of Mayday Parade, Jason Lancaster. He, uh, he started, he left Mayday Parade and started this new band. Oh, by the way, Mayday Parade is from Tallahassee, Florida. Um, uh, Go Radio. That's the name of the, that's the name of the band, and they had they actually wrote a song called "Good Night Moon." I actually got to see uh, Go Radio live with a day to remember back in <laughs> 2010, uh, long time ago. Haven't seen a day to remember uh, since. Uh, but but uh, as far as my my summer reading tour, uh, who who are the who are the Panthers that I would want to see uh, show up, and which book? As far as current Panthers, I have three of them. Uh, I excluded Ryan Lomberg from this uh, because of the fact that he was he's already in front. Uh, but I think 
I think Brandon Montour would be a good, a, a good, very enthusiastic reading a children's book. Uh, you said Matthew Kachuk. I, I also wrote Matthew Kachuk. Now I also wrote Spencer Knight. And the reason why I wrote Spencer Knight is, is I saw, I saw, I for sure saw. A, I feel like I see, we see a like a, in his media availability last week during development camp. We saw a little a, a, a guy who has, who seems to have had more mature answers when coming back from the players assistance program. And I, and I, I, I don't know if we could read too much in those responses, but I saw him respond to questions a little differently, maybe more full of life uh, after, after what he went through, no matter, regardless of what it was. But as far as performer Panthers, you got to go with the funny guy, right? Uh, Keith Yandel is, is, is one for, for me oh, as far as one. that, as far as someone who would, I would like to, have uh in the summer reading tour and the other one because and this is one because he's an actually he's actually an author a former panther sean thornton is also one uh grinder overlooked that's a great one too he has a great well and 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 uh i did not read his uh his newest uh release but he, he he released it like maybe like two years ago and uh from from overlooked to winning two Stanley Cups uh, as well. So the story of Sean Thornton is is is, uh, is definitely uh, one that is uh, that is uh, really about perseverance and all that. But as far as books, uh, two of them. One of them is is by Dr. Seuss, and of course I have a little bit of a connection to this because I am around the theme parks all the time. Seuss Landing, of course. Oh, the places you'll go, and I love. I just overall love the life lessons that it, that it that it takes. Uh, that it that it gives you the perspective on where you go, as well. And when I made the decision to move out of South Florida to chase my media career in golf, I think about the the people I meet, the different ups and downs in life as well, and that. Even though it's a children's book, it gives me a a it gives people the readers a, like lessons learned and all the and all about the challenges as well in life. And this is also a personal favorite of mine from when I when I was a kid. The very hungry caterpillar, <laughs> turning from a pa- caterpillar Ooh, to a butterfly. A good one too. The 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 growth of of uh, just not 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 just about eating, going in a cocoon and all that stuff, but but also how you go through life too and those are like the little life lesson uh book books as well that's the you, kind of the direction that i uh i i went into you but, know you, mentioning mentioning dr seuss i've got i've got an honorable mention for you that i think would be absolutely hilarious okay can you imagine one fish two fish red fish blue fish with sergey bobobka reading <laughs> that one that would be that would be absolute comedy with the accent and everything. I think that would be, honestly, that that might be my top answer. I think that that would be life changing. Or anything related to the Lorax and Sam Bennett. That too, I like that because because that could be, that could be that could definitely be something. Can you and can you guess what book Nathan Horton read to to my third grade group? Wow, you remember the book? I do. It, it's wow. very easy okay. what was it? Nathan Horton. That's that's a that's a clue. I'll let you guess. Oh, it's all in the name. Cat in the Hat. Horton Here's a Who. That was the book that Nathan Horton read to us. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Wow. That I, I could have. I, I, I thought Cat in the Hat because we're talking about the Florida Panthers, the cats and all that stuff. So but I, I was somewhat close there. But yeah, just a great uh, just a cool uh, just cool opportunity that the Florida Panthers uh, are do every every single year to just uh be around the community but and and jacob you know what's the true meaning of summer what's that the money i i I mean the children (laughs) (laughs) as if you guys don't know that quote that's uh this episode of spongebob where uh where mr krabs uh does like a little carnival to get kids his money and ups the prices of uh kids meals to 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 get more of more greedy it is uh so de- so definitely uh definitely uh a, a quote that i thought of on the fly 
as uh, on, on the show today. But uh, we're going to talk. We're going to go back to talking about hockey in our third and final segment where the NHL said that they are not going to be doing an in-season tournament like the NBA is doing. We're going to discuss that more here on the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast. Your Locked On Panthers, your daily podcast on the Florida Panthers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Third and final segment here on this Wednesday, July 19th edition of the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast. Thank you for making the Lockdown Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. It's another edition of Winans Wednesday on the show. And Jacob, the NHL uh, re- re- reportedly is not interested in doing an in-season tournament. And I can't say that I'm, I can't say that I'm surprised, honestly. Um, if we, if we heard Gary Bettman rejecting the whole play-in tournament to begin with what made us believe that he was going to do an in-season tournament like the nba was doing what what were your thoughts when you first heard about the about that news yeah i wasn't at all shocked with that news that there would be no in-season tournament um i'm not even really entirely sure if i'm fully on board with the nba doing it uh i i don't necessarily see the point i get like i guess you're you're trying to go with the european style uh, almost like European soccer, where you have in-season domestic tournaments that really work well in Europe when you have soccer leagues, but with it's multiple leagues, like it's it's a tier system. Uh, so you have teams from like the lower tier English clubs, for example, playing against the high the Premier League teams, which you don't normally get to see. So in that sense, it, it there's a there's a little bit of a draw to it. Over here, I don't see it as super necessary unless the nba were to be playing against g league teams or whatever and giving those guys a chance at a spotlight i think that that would be intriguing i'm not a big fan of the in-season tournament idea uh as it stands right now with with the nhl i think that was an immediate no-go because hockey just comes with such a a heightened injury risk Uh, you don't want guys getting injured in a in a mid-season tournament that doesn't really have uh, any any big weight to it unless that tournament were to say guarantee seating in the playoffs or guarantee a playoff spot or something like that then you can incentivize it Uh, but I I don't see any reason why the NHL would need it and Gary Bettman's not that progressive to the point where he would do that he's he's been against the Olympics he's been against the World Cup of Hockey Um, an in-season tournament was never going to have a chance uh, Mm -hmm. where, where Gary Bettman is concerned so I'm happy they're not doing it. I would hate to see a guy get hurt in a in a midseason tournament and ruin the rest of the season or miss the Stanley Cup playoffs, which is of course the the main goal. the the only The only downside I could see is maybe if you have an in season tournament that that gives teams a chance to maybe rest their star players or let younger players play. Uh, if you could expand rosters and call guys up from the AHL for that, that'd be really cool. But um, I don't even think it got that far in, into that conversation because uh, I think it was immediately off the table from from the very beginning. Yeah, and the issue is is because U.S. sports don't have a relegation system as well, right? And and the talent level is such a big drop off between, of course, the NHL and the and the AHL that it will be mostly unwatchable if you have a, <laughs> a Charlotte Checkers. I'm just naming a random matchup: a Charlotte Checkers versus like a a, a New York Rangers type of situation if you were doing that like a US Open Cup version of it. Uh when Orlando City won the US Open Cup, uh they actually um beat a I, I believe uh I'm not sure where Sacramento FC uh, lands in the I know they're they're not in the MLS. They're in like the second or third division. I believe uh, they're USL. Yeah. US um, so- yeah the US yeah the US soccer league. Yeah so so that 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 in itself is it, it doesn't work the same in in, in hockey uh, as far as that, um, especially because soccer is it's a, a, an even lower scoring game and one bounce can can make even more of a difference, uh, even if you're possessing the ball in soccer more, 
one um and to a certain extent in hockey but you know you know skill on skill um it, there are more goals that are going to come by in in, in, the, in in the sport overall. And the thing is, if you were to incentivize it as far as putting tournament games, as far as maybe, and there's a conversation that I had with Frank Fort on Twitter uh, earlier today. And what if you had your 82 game schedule and a certain game what counted as a regular season game and an, and a, and a, and a, in-season tournament game but you still kept all the nhl teams there do you think that would be more an incentive for the nhl to consider i think i think that would that would be more of an incentive um i just i just don't think it ever got to a point where they could have a, a deeper conversation about what it would look like uh i i think that makes a lot of sense um if you were to have it but i think i think it's it's a layered thing you have the, the first layer is, do we want to have this or do we not? And then the mm -hmm. second layer is, if we do have this, how are we going to put this together? And I don't think it ever, it, it's ever going to get to that second stage unless, like you said, we have a relegation system in American sports here uh, outside of outside of soccer. And, and uh, which, of course, that'll never happen. There's just too much money in ownership. Uh, right. No one's going to own a bottom feeder team just to be relegated to the AHL. It wouldn't make any sense. So it's not something that would would ever really come to fruition i, I like the the idea it, like have some creativity uh come up with with different ways to draw eyes and and build the sport there'll be and less tanking it, definitely less tanking um and and i think uh it, looking at ways to make that to make that a reality is is always welcome but i think if we're gonna prioritize some things let's prioritize like the playoff format and things like that before we go into trying to make an in-season tournament happen I, I think it'd be great for diehards. Like I, I would definitely watch it. Uh, no matter, mm -hmm. no matter the the matchups, I would absolutely watch it. But it's it's it doesn't make a ton of sense from an injury risk perspective. Um, players they'd have to agree to it. I don't see a lot of players agreeing to it. Uh, it yeah, kind of a non-starter. But mm -hmm. it, it's it's a it's an outside the box idea. And I think the more you can at least throw those up and see see what what may actually work, the the better the league will be. Yeah, and I'm fully on board with doing the update in the playoff format before you could even go to the in-season in -season part of it. And if you do do a regular rele relegation system, the amount of the amount of AHL teams that currently play in their arenas that would have and and the facilities as well, the money you'd have to these the ownership would have to put in to upgrade as well. I'm not sure if that's a road that they would want to go down as well. And if they get relegated and they're playing in a in an in an NHL size arena while being relegated, how they're gonna see how would how would they go as far as attendance too? And you're thinking of a lot of open space as well. Yeah, I, I know a lot of NHL, AHL, and ECHL games don't fill out to the t to the tippy top. Even even the even the Florida Everblades game that I went to, game three of the Kelly Cup final, didn't wasn't at full capacity. Neither it was maybe like. 80 90 percent full but not a hundred percent so you also got to consider that part of it too as far as building arenas that are nhl built when it when it comes to uh teams getting promoted as well so that's a and also in in these uh smaller cities that you might not have a lot of people are, are you gonna get a 20 plus thousand fans in the in this little small town it's it, it, it and that's once again a reason why pro rel in, in U.S. sports, in my opinion, uh, won't work. I agree. I, I don't think there's a path forward for for a relegation system at all. I, I don't. Uh, just the structure of of American sports is so different from from European sports. Uh, like in the U.S., you have a draft. So if you're last place and get relegated, does that how does that affect you getting the number one pick in the draft? That would be that would be a massive hurdle cool. to overcome that it'd be imagine getting the number one pick, but you're relegated. So Connor Bedard's rookie season is spent playing in the AHL. Um, I, I think that, that would be fly. really weird. Not a chance. Exactly. If, if you want to, if you want to give some spotlight to these, to the lower level teams or something, I, I would be on board with the idea of uh, similar to similar to what they do in the NBA occasionally have like um, preseason games and things like that against 
either European teams or even have preseason games against your ECHL affiliate. Um, that gives that gives guys a, a chance to open the eyes of management, but also gives guys a, a on the main club a, a little bit of a tune up. Um, and I think I think that can make a lot of sense. Do things like that, um, and def- definitely incorporating some European teams. Play against European teams. Obviously, you have to work out travel and things like that. But we've seen in the NBA, uh, there's there's been times where like top level European teams have come over to play preseason games, and and like Real Madrid came to play against the OKC Thunder when Luka Doncic was playing for Madrid and was 17 years old. I got to play against the OKC Thunder that preseason. Uh, no one knew he would go on to be one of the best players in the NBA. And I think that looking back on it was really cool. You could definitely see a little bit of that in the NHL if they wanted to uh, to make that happen. Let's get Mate Mik- Mitchkoff's team against an NHL, uh, his KHL team against an that NHL. That would be so sick, but it'll never happen. <laughs> yeah, especially with the relations with Russia. <laughs> yeah. No way. Yeah, they're not going to, they're definitely not going to. Uh, put that together because, but I mean, but when Mitchkov does arrive in the NHL, oh, that's gonna be exciting. He's get, yeah, he's gonna be special. He, he's definitely and and he slipped to seven, damn it. <laughs> but of course, we we know why. But uh, Jacob, I want to thank you so much for joining me on this Widens Wednesday edition of of the show. Uh, tell everybody where they could follow you online. Yep, you can follow me online at Jacob Widens Eight on Twitter. Awesome. Awesome, man. Thank, thank, thank you so much. And I will see you next week, my friend. Looking forward to it. Thanks. And if you like what you're hearing, please subscribe to the podcast to be notified every single time the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast jumps into your podcast feed. Don't forget to also subscribe to the other shows on the Locked On NHL Network, including Locked On NHL, Locked On Fantasy Hockey with Flip Livingstone and Sue Roden, and Locked On NHL Prospects. Thank you for making the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast your first listen of the day. Sir Marmonda Velez. With Jacob Winans. And you've been listening to the Locked On Florida Panthers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day.